First question is from Jay Rosen 10. What are the best exercises for training obliques? Oh, for some reason, the obliques it fell out of favor to train. Actually, I know what the reason is. You love to talk yeah. about this one. Yeah, idiots in the in the <laughs> side bands, physique side bands, side bands. and bodybuilding world talking about how training your obliques will make you get this huge waist and whatever. Uh. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Now, maybe them, because they're so massively muscled and they're on tons and tons of gear. Maybe that makes sense for them, but for the average person, there's no there's no truth to this whatsoever. If you look at um, ancient sculptures from the Greeks or the Romans, and remember back in those days, they didn't have bodybuilders to sculpt. They based their sculptures off of their gladiators and their athletes and what they saw to be high-performing athletes. And what you'll notice in all of them is all of them have well-developed obliques. Obliques are some of the most important performance muscles that you can have and important stabilizer muscles that you can have. As an athlete, your obliques are what give you a lot of the power to throw punches and balls and kick and run and twist and all that stuff. So very, very important muscles to to train. I'm always skeptical of somebody I see like that's really shredded and cut and doesn't have pronounced obliques. I'm like, you're not that strong. I yes. guarantee it. Well, yes. it's it. It's first of all, it's probably one of the one of the more underrated muscles, right? On totally your, on your body. And to your point too, it's if you are somebody who can deadlift or squat a lot of weight, it's a it's a stabilizer. Yeah, I mean, you have to. So those those ones will naturally get developed if you do a good job of doing that. So to your point, Justin, like yeah, it's an obvious sign that someone isn't that strong mm, right. if they have really weak uh, obliques, even if the rest of their body now, looks really developed. My favorite exercises for obliques, now I have favorites that are more of like a sculpting, developing exercise, and then I have favorites that are more of a performance exercise. Now, the you know I didn't play basketball and football and baseball, but I did do judo, jujitsu, and wrestling, and I did train my obliques uh, from an athletic standpoint as well. So let's start with the sculpting exercise. I like uh, cable chops, cable mm -hmm. chops coming from the top, the Those side, from the bottom. When I'm doing them from a sculpting standpoint, it's controlled. My bottom uh, part of my body is stabilized, and I'm developing my obliques. You know, similar way that I would develop my biceps. I'm doing reps controlling the repetition, trying to feel the obliques stretch and squeeze. Now, from a performance standpoint, I'm doing those exercises explosively and I'm pivoting off my feet. Yeah. Now I'm chopping quickly or better yet, I used to like to do this with bands. Bands was my favorite way to do these explosive type chops. See, movements. I love to do that with uh, med balls and against Throws. the wall. Yeah, yeah. thrown against the wall. There's just so many uh, explosive power type uh, movements you can do like that that have so much carryover and translate so well to uh, athletic pursuits. Uh, I also really like. Um, what was that one called? It's it's the one where you, where you have like a, counter rotation exercise. Yeah, well, yeah, not not just that, not just anti rotation rotation, but uh, also like Russian uh, twist, the landmine. Oh, sorry, yeah, I was just <laughs> throwing them out there. <laughs> <laughs> one of them will stick. Uh, yeah, no, the land landmine rotations too, because then uh, as I'm keeping it in tight, I can really emphasize my obliques to stabilize that mm. weight on the eccentric part. Definitely, so I, I I cable. Cable chops for me because you can you can use cable chops either as like a heavy slow grinding strength training tool or you can use an explosive kind of similar you're saying like with the med ball so mm -hmm. wood chop I mean wood chops is what we call it or cable chops I think are are the best I mean that's my favorite for developing them specifically but just incorporating rotational and anti rotational movements mm -hmm. so I mean even you can take something like a like a, a dumbbell row right a single arm dumbbell row mm -hmm. and you can throw especially because if if you're pretty strong you can row a pretty good amount of, of weight on that and if you actually throw some rotation in there you'll probably be able to row even more so I love doing that as like a rotational movement and you get in obliques involved in that a lot when and you do then that. of course too for isometric uh, you know, farmer carries will basically, um, you, you know, like if you do that for the suitcase carry, so you just do one side and you really isolate uh, and, and, you know, focus on really like keeping your body in good posture as you're walking with with that kind of weight. It really, you know, has, has a good effect. Well, I'll tell you, you know, um, when I did, uh, because I followed the MAP Strong program and it's a, it, it, there were farmer carries, heavy farmer carries in there. And that was the first time I'd ever done them consistently in a workout. And I could not believe the muscle that I put on my back, mm -hmm. on my my forearms, and my core. Mm -hmm. My core got so strong from doing heavy, just even not even doing a suitcase carry, just a just a both hands 
I'm in a trap bar and I'm doing heavy walk while I'm bracing my core. Well, think about that too, how your arms have a propensity to just slightly move. And yeah, so right. all these little tiny movements, you have to be able to stabilize and have that anti-rotational effect. So if I'm moving forward, I don't want my arms to swing. I want to keep my core in place. I want to be able to to brace properly so your obliques uh, are fired up like crazy. 